Oh, hey, and what have you done for love today? Don't fall away and leave me to myself. Don't fall away and leave all freedom in my hands, in my hands again. Love lies bleeding. Okay, you'll see that was song was appropriate. All right, and the reason why I sung that is you'll see right here. Have you ever heard of this guy? Ignaz Simmelweis. I'm sure I butchered that as well as a couple other things in here that I'm going to just pass over altogether. If you don't know this information, it is going to blow your mind. We are going to... That's not that bad. We're going to quickly read through this, and please, by all means, stay with me because I'm going to teach you something, if you're not familiar with, that's going to blow your mind. All right, so this guy, born in Austrian Empire, now Budapest, Hungary, He's a Hungarian physician who discovered the cause of, I don't know how to say all that, child, uh, child bed fever and introduced antisepsis into medical practice. So he was educated at the universities of Pest and Vienna. Simon Weiss received his doctor's degree from Vienna in 1844 and was appointed assistant at the obstetric clinic in Vienna. He soon became involved in the problem of child bed infection, the scourge of maternity hospitals throughout Europe. Although most women delivered at home, those who had to seek hospitalizations because of poverty, illegitimacy, or obstetrical complications faced mortality rates ranging as high as 25 to 30 percent. Some thought that the infection was induced by overcrowding, poor ventilation, the onset of lactation, or miasma. Simon Weiss proceeded to investigate its cause over the strong objections of his chief, who, like other continental physicians, had reconciled himself to the idea that the disease was unpreventable. Dude, don't worry about it. Trust me, there's nothing anyone can do. We're a bunch of smarty pants. Just, just listen, bud. There ain't nothing anybody can do about this. <clears throat> Sit down, shut up. Simon Weiss observed that among women in the first division of the clinic, the death rate from uh, childbed fever was two or three times as high as among those in the second division. Although the two divisions were identical with the exception that students were taught in the first and midwives in the second, he put forward the thesis that perhaps the students carried something to the patients they examined during labor. The death of a friend from a wound infection incurred during the examination of a woman who died of childbed infection and the similarity of the findings in the two cases gave support to his reasoning. Check it out. Stay with me. He concluded that students who came directly from the dissecting room to the maternity ward, ward carried the infections from mothers who had died of the disease to healthy mothers. He ordered the students, does this sound familiar? He ordered the students to wash their hands in a solution of chlorinated lime before each examination. So stop. It took until 18-something for common sense to kick in and say, you know what you should do? Before you go in there with all them bloody gross hands touching somebody else down, especially in their, you know, wash your hands. And at least now we can say the, the white people are good for one thing. Yeah? Just like you're told coronavirus, wash your hands. Under these procedures, the mortality rates in the first division drop. <clears throat> Pardon me while I burst. From 18, <laughs> listen to this, from 18 to 1%. And in March and August of 1848, no woman died in childbirth in his division. So proven, yes? The results speak for themselves. The younger medical men in Vienna recognized the significance of his discovery and gave him all possible assistance. His superior, on the other hand, was critical, not because he wanted to oppose him, but because he failed to understand him. Pushback from the establishment. In the year 1848, a liberal political revolution swept Europe, and Simmelweis took part in the events in Vienna. After the revolution had been put down, Simmelweis found that his political activities had increased, not helped, increased the obstacles to his professional work. In 1849, he was dropped from his post. He then applied for a teaching post at the university, but was turned down. Soon after, he gave a successful lecture at the Medical Society of Vienna, entitled The Origin of Childbed Fever. At the same time, he applied once more for his teaching post, but although he received it, there were, there were restrictions that he considered humiliating. So he left. And then came back in 1850 into Pest. He worked for the next six years at some hospital. Uh, an epidemic of childbed fever had broken out in the obstetrics department, and at his request... 
All his shit was put in charge of the department. His measures promptly reduced the mortality rate in his years there. It averaged only 0.85%. In, Va in Prague and Vienna, meantime, the rate was still from 10 to 15%. Again, proven to work. In 1855, he was appointed professor of obstetrics at the University of Pest. Bear with me, stay with me. You're not going to believe how this story ends. He married, but had five children. Uh, married, had five children, and developed his private practice. His ideas were accepted in Hungary, and the government addressed a circular to all. Excuse me, addressed a circular to all district authorities, ordering the introduction of the prophylactic methods of Simmelweis. In 1857, he declined the chair of obstetrics at the University of Zurich. Vienna remained hostile toward him, and the editor of, of well, however you say that, wrote that it was time to stop the nonsense about the chlorine hand wash. So even propaganda, propaganda was written against him and made against him. In 1868, Samuelweiss published his principal work. He sent it to all the prominent obstetricians and the medical societies abroad, but the general reaction was adverse. The weight of authority stood against his teachings, even though he was proven. He addressed several open letters to professors of medical, or excuse me, of medicine in other countries, but to little effect. At a conference of German physicians and natural scientists, most of the speakers, including the pathologists, rejected his doctrine. The years of controversy gradually, gradually undermined his spirit. It broke him. In 1865, he suffered a breakdown and was taken to a mental hospital where he died. Ironically, his illness and death were caused by the infection of a wound on his right hand, apparently the result of an operation he had performed before, taking, before being taken ill. He died of the same disease against which he had struggled all his professional life. His doctrine was subsequently accepted by medical science, and everybody carried it, but he never got any credit. He was proven right over and over again. The establishment didn't like it. They broke his spirit. He went to a mental institution and died what he fought against and ended up being right. So all this stuff, like everyone, this is the same stuff that's going on with Corona and the jab and all that. And I feel this way. For the first time in my life, I actually looked into what it would be like to check into a mental institution. And as soon as I said you'd be on at least one medication, I'm like, nope, because that's just kind of where I'm at right now. That's kind of how I feel. I'm okay. Like, I'm all right. But this is this is exactly what happens. My I have been proven right over and over again, and I am continually told I'm wrong or that I'm not in touch with my higher spirit. And I literally have the proof is in the pudding. Like I have the videos. I I mean I don't. So I have no desire to talk to anyone that's delusional. And some of you have said you have not said those things to me, and I have the texts proving it. So again, I have no desire to converse. If I'm not talking to you, that's why. And that's your fault. I'm not going to sit here and listen to someone say I'm wrong when I have the proof from just like this guy, because it's going to make me crazy like this guy. So we will all come to agree in however many years that what we did was wrong. And I mean, to, the, to how we reacted to the pandemic, the masks, the social distancing, the jabs, we will all say it was the wrong thing to do, just like everything's been the wrong thing to do. And all of us who are standing here telling you what you're going to agree to in so many years, I don't know what's going to be left of us. But yeah, so that's the story of how washing your hands came about. Because it took until 18-something for people to have common sense to say, don't, I have already said my, I don't need to repeat it. What have you done for love today? And you can go ahead and leave that love bleeding in my hands.